my Kaiju Network podcast, where we have a very healthy obsession with Kaiju. I am your co-host, Kent, and with me is your other co-host. Sup, it's Jason. How's it going? We are doing the commentary on the brand spanking new Godzilla vs. Kong today, and we figured, hey, it's on HBO Max for 31 days. Why not take a little bit of that time and actually do a commentary? So uh, for anybody who... Um, is going to be listening to this in the future and doing it on home video. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the timing might be a tad off, uh, depending upon how they load those discs and and start up the film on those. I don't think it's going to be too different uh, from what we're getting here on the streaming service. But, hey, uh, we just thought it's right here. Brand new movie. Why not do it? Mm -hmm. So for me personally, this is going to be my eighth time seeing the film. And I'm taking advantage of it. I got 31 days, and then this thing's going to disappear for like two months, roughly, until we get it on home video. Uh, the more I watch it, the the more I enjoy it. And like we said a couple weeks ago when we um, discussed the film, it is a fairly flawed film, but damn, it's entertaining. And the more I watch it, again, the more I love it. It's just a fun film. It is the definition of a summer blockbuster popcorn film so yeah jason uh, how, how many times is, is this going to be for you this would actually be my fourth because this is the first time watching it since our initial review of it a couple of weeks ago <laughs> i just been so busy with work and other things uh, i just really haven't had the time to take advantage to watch it uh on HBO Max and stuff. So apparently this will be my fourth time and hopefully try to see it maybe a couple more times before it's gone by the end of the month. So, Mm -hmm. but um, with that, um, make sure to hit the uh, subscribe button down below as well as the like button if you're on YouTube and you can watch us anywhere video format wise on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, uh, Periscope, and as well as uh, DLive. And you can listen to our audio version of the podcast over at uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and tune in as well. And we're trying to be as accessible uh, on any of the platforms so you can you know, listen to us on your desktop, laptop, or on the go on your mobile device. Okay, and so with that, we're going to get started here on the commentary. Uh, For those of you who have not uh, joined us for one of these before, we're going to go three, two, one, go. When I say go, that's when we hit the uh, on the play uh, for future people uh, on your device uh, for your home video or if you're streaming, the select button. So are you ready, Jason? Let me get to the button. There we go. I'm okay, ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you just let me hit the button. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Hopefully neither, neither – oh, it's buffering. Who knows how long this is going to take. Maybe you're going to be a few seconds ahead of me. <laughs> That's at the uh, – oh, still buffering. Okay, there it goes. Okay, now mine's – yep. Hopefully we don't have uh, buffering issues at all. <laughs> neither one of us. I had a little bit – I never had an issue with the buffering – while watching this until a couple days ago uh it wasn't terrible uh but it just kind of like froze like three seconds or something like that yeah so let me hit the commentary cam here there we go but yeah hopefully i don't have any buffering issues too because i was having a little bit of a problem even with uh loading some of the youtube videos the other day and thankfully the uh internet issues that I had a couple weeks ago. Hopefully that doesn't crop up (laughs) too. Hopefully the people that live above you aren't uh, jerks either. (laughs) Well, recently they've started being a-holes, so... Haven't they always been? (laughs) It seems like just about every time we podcast. Well, they've gotten worse since they've (laughs) gotten a kid, so... (laughs) They got a kid? Yep. Would they buy it? (laughs) (laughs) You weren't specific. (laughs) I like this particular design of Kong. 
I, I, I find it so funny that initially when the initial photos of Kong were released, a lot of people were making hay on his beard and I'm going, let's just wait till we watch it. And I watch it and I go, this is probably my favorite design of, of this character. Yeah, with it sort of having that uh, that classic appearance of Khan, but also modifying it a little bit more where he's more mature-ish compared to his younger self from Skull Island. The body structure of this Kong reminds me of um, those kind of those um, world's strongest men uh, competitors. Oh yeah, because he like some of those guys, you know, have a little bit of like a gut, but not they're not like fat. Uh, but if you look at certain angles of this Kong, he kind of has a little bit of that on him too. But he's got the mass on him as well. I mean, this Kong is uh, buff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kill for a body like that, actually. <laughs> Instead, I'm I'm this tub of I can't believe it's not Kent. <laughs> <laughs> like I was uh, seeing, like you were showing some of those uh, memory photos on your Facebook, and it's like, boy, I can't believe how skinny your neck looked <laughs> back then. <laughs> yeah, you. Shit, thanks for calling me fat. I'm already self-conscious. Get <laughs> <You> jerk. <laughs> I blame my kids. Well, you call me fat, but. <laughs> By the way, one of the things I would have loved to have had, um, even if it was a quick, uh, like, um, flashback, flashback, my voice is cracking here, uh, I would love to have had some visuals, if not even some more storytelling on. The capturing a Kong, building this containment center, and 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 what have you, because this is supposed to be taking place. I think it's what three years after. Yeah, I think yeah. three years after the events of King of the Monsters. How in the heck could they put some that containment center, something that big, together in three years? Like, I would have loved to have seen. Um, I would have loved to have seen just some of that backstory. Yeah, I was thinking of that myself. Is was that how were they able to get Khan? <laughs> how were right. they able to capture Khan and put him in this containment area, like you mentioned, and especially how this and this huge storm that's engulf engulfing Skull Island? How that happen i would like to have seen a flashback story on it well yeah and i and i mean you know lip service you know having some some of that being mentioned is better than not but it's still not wholly satisfying i, I just i i love this universe so much that i just want more <laughs> mm -hmm. by the way too just like most of these um opening credits to these MonsterVerse films, there's so many different little fun nuggets of information and Easter eggs in here. Like, you know, you get a t moment just to kind of pause or see if you can somehow slowly go through these credits. There's some interesting stuff there. That's the one thing I would like to try to do one of these times is pause literally every second, especially when they uh wide out some of those areas for the credit areas and see what they actually say. Yeah, like they just show Godzilla like lifespan and some other information. Titanus Kong, 104 feet tall, 158 tons. Yeah, I didn't I couldn't quite catch everything there. Cause of death disembowelment. <laughs> Here's our March Madness bracket. <laughs> Again, I, I still just am kind of disappointed, though, we didn't get 
even again, even in something like a quick flashback, Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, that we just didn't get more because that was one of the things so many of us were looking forward to. If, if we didn't get it in King of the Monsters, so many of us thought we might get it here, and we didn't. Mm-hmm. And I understand it probably was for budgetary reasons, but yeah. I also like how they incorporate the Super Aya esque type of effect with the light streams and stuff before the uh, title reveal in the credit Mm -hmm. as well as when they are traveling to uh, Hollow Earth. I think that was a nice touch. Yeah. Some fans have criticized the film for saying that um, one of the things that they dislike about the movie is the fact that the movie says you gotta believe in conspiracy theorists and and all that and I'm going well no because sure this this guy Bernie is a conspiracy theorist but he's not one of those crazy conspiracy theorists where he's out there trying to destroy the company or burn it down he's trying to do some investigating you know it, there, there's one thing where you have conspiracy theorists who are out there trying to uh really damage a group of people or something and then there's an other conspiracy theorist kind of like bernie where you're trying to just figure things out you got a hunch and you're trying to dig some things up and then if there is some bad stuff then you're going to expose them the, the, there is a difference <laughs> And not to mention, too, this guy's a widower. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, you you have your you find the love of your life, you marry them, and then they die. I, I mean, I don't think we learn how she died, but uh, you know, that's gonna bust you up. Like you're gonna go into some mentally weird spaces, you know, at least for a while. Yeah, but as far as trying to expose. Like trying to expose people when you're mentioning about earlier. I mean, there's going to be some people involved that you're going to try to ex- expose, and they'll try to do anything to ruin you or possibly harm you. And sometimes you have to defend yourself and try to. I find it funny, though, that some of those people who complained about it. You know, I'm friends with some of them on Facebook. Some of the same people I've noticed over the years have, you know, talked about their own conspiracy theories. So we we all have our own conspiracy theories. (laughs) And plus, people have their own opinions to certain things. And I think a lot of things, too, that sort of have to at least respect on what they're trying to get at, but also, I mean, you've got your own opinions of other things, but besides the point. <laughs> Philosophy, Daikaiju Network. <laughs> now, what do you, this is one thing I um, am disappointed we didn't touch upon because we touched upon so many things in the discussion. Um, And this led to a theory that maybe the Godzilla that we see throughout this film was actually Mechagodzilla in disguise. What do you make of – or what are your thoughts on Godzilla's eyes actually glowing in this film? I just think from what we've seen in King of the Monsters that after the whole uh, reviving him part – and him consuming all that nuclear energy from that aftermath, I think it sort of overpowered him more that some of that radiation is, you can kind of say it's overflowing a bit. So I think that's sort of part of that whole aftermath from the previous film. But I thought by and large, that all of that energy left when he turned into burning Godzilla and used the the nuclear pulse. 
But I think there's still some remnants of it. Because, I mean... And I think that they mentioned this, too, in the 2014 film, that these Titans live off of a lot of the radiation and stuff. Mainly, I was, and I think particularly more on Godzilla. Because yeah. with, with there not being as much radiation today as as it was maybe possibly millions and millions of years ago, I mean, where is he going to get some of the uh, uh, radiation today? I will say this. I think his eyes glowing are gorgeous to look at. I like looking into your eyes, Godzilla. Um, <laughs> but I don't necessarily like it when they glow almost all the time. I think uh, if he's going to shoot his fire, then yeah, I think maybe that works. But I think them glowing almost all the time is is a little much. Considering by and large, like it, it didn't occur in the previous films. Again, yeah. I, I still wish we had spent more time with this character, uh, Godzilla. I mean, um, it, it, they could have done more with with Godzilla here. I just but, wanted to see more of my king. <laughs> but going back on that whole theory of. Like a Godzilla being disguised as Godzilla here. And I know we've did some discussion of it in the past that it just seemed to me it it feels ridiculous that why would they why would Apex take the time to make some kind of flesh like covering for Mecha Godzilla and also making these designs of his dorsal plates and every single detail down the nitty gritty portions of uh, Godzilla's look and appearance just to like maybe in the end either have it burn off or Godzilla or Khan uh, revealing it uh, the exoskeleton version of Mechagodzilla it to me, it just feels it would just be too much. Well, I have a theory on that. Oh, I wish – what I should have done is saved that picture where someone – they were making fun of the people who said they thought you know, the Godzilla was Mecha Godzilla. Mm -hmm. And so what they did is they photoshopped the Godzilla and did some tweaks, and they said – this is what your Godzilla would have looked like. And like Godzilla was incredibly skinny, like the Mecha Godzilla in the film. And it had like the, the four fingers, like in a rectangle <laughs> shape. Like it was oh, yeah. ridiculous looking. But my theory on what you were saying was that I thought, okay, if these people are correct in saying that the Godzilla we see throughout most of this film is indeed Mecha Godzilla. The reason why I think Apex would do that is because they hate Godzilla for whatever reason. Like maybe the person has a personal deal against him or whatever um and so what they wanted to do is make a mega godzilla put you know a fleshy outer covering on it and more or less frame godzilla and then destroy stuff and create havoc and all that and then come to the forefront maybe get a bunch of money and loyalty from world governments and people and then say hey like we got kind of this weapon and then reveal Mecha Godzilla as is. And then when the real Godzilla showed up, you know, everybody's hating on it. And then they send out the Mecha and then they get all the world's armies or whatever going up against Godzilla at the same time that they're sending out Mecha Godzilla. Like I thought it was about kind of like what the aliens did in the 74 film, framing Godzilla. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I thought the whole story thing would have been if that turned out to be true which it didn't <laughs> <laughs> i mean if if they whenever whenever they decide to expand on the monsters and start to introduce some of the aliens maybe some of the famous aliens from the godzilla franchise like the exilians or people from planet x or whoever um yeah, that could at least be possible to do something like that, but 
sort of in this time frame, not even introducing some of the outside, like, kind of the out of this world stuff, even though that they sort of hinted or elude that part with King Ghidorah in the last film, but they still want to at least ground things first before they possibly go into that direction whenever they decide to expand on the MonsterVerse. By the way, and I just happened to notice this when I watched this again yesterday. When we first are introduced to Mechagodzilla and it roars, don't you think its roar is similar to that of Ghidorah's from the previous film? Just a tad bit. Because I'm like, you know what? If that, because I haven't seen King of the Monsters in a while. It's been like a year, I think, since I've seen that one. And I kind of thought, you know, I think that sounds very close. And and if that is true, then that's a kind of a neat little clue or hint to the audience if you're fairly familiar enough with, um, you know, the last film that, hey, you know, King Ghidorah is an well no now i just am blowing holes in my theory because that's before the mech goes rogue i would never it, mind it's, it's, <laughs> i was thinking more along the lines of the after part when he's uh hijacked now am they, i to understand too i put in that uh power source from hollow earth into the Mecha Godzilla, because then you can hear just a, a little bit of King Ghidorah after that part. Yeah, because I just realized, like, okay, the initial, that's not when it goes rogue. But, okay, now, one thing I've been trying to figure out is, you know, after they get that power source and then they're starting Mecha Godzilla up again, were its eyes supposed to go blue after? as a result of that power source because you see it kind of flickering between blue and red and then it goes red and I thought okay is that supposed to mean something is it supposed to mean that with that power source they were supposed to go blue but because the power source is allowing the DNA of Ghidorah to get in there that the red means no that spirit or DNA or whatever you want to call it took over I don't. We'll know. get there. I think we're kind of getting all, ahead of ourselves here in the I'm discussion. Is just time out. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves here. You're we're the talking about ahead things that are happening like nearly <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half into the film. And here we are back at the Skull Island Containment. I do like this little girl, Gia. She's a cute little girl. Apparently, she's uh, making an appearance at uh, one of the, uh, I think... Pensacon. Yeah. Pensacon thing. I think next month or June. She's going to visit the ruins of the Apex facility there. <laughs> You know, and I'm not tr- joking when I say this because I've seen this movie. You know, this is going on my eighth time now. This movie is inspiring me to maybe want to learn sign language. <laughs> like, I'm like, you know what? That actually is kind of cool. Like, you know. Yeah, here's me trying to teach myself to do Japanese over the years and then. <laughs> I'm every trying time, to do that too. Like every, there, I've got be a, these guys. <laughs> there's a certain point to where I just stop, and there's just a big gap in between where, I, to where I just have to start all over again. <laughs> uh, you know, when my wife got me Rosetta Stone for Christmas back in 2016, and I upgraded my computer to run it. Um, I initially there for the first, I don't know, two or so weeks after that was working on it. And then sadly I got away from it because I was doing some volunteer work for a little while at that time. And then of course, uh, you know, my son was young. We had our daughter who was on the way and um, just the volunteer work and then raising 
two young kids got and is still getting in the way <laughs> of and not to mention too there's so many other things like I got all these books that I want to read too so I've been doing dabbling in some reading occasionally I've got all these movies and shows I'm trying to work on too uh, in terms of watching and um, I got a ton of video games I want to play through as well mm. yeah I was trying to teach myself through the uh, the Duolingo uh, mobile app on Japanese and stuff and I was doing pretty good but yeah I've got the Rosetta the Stone years and then before I got that for Christmas earlier that year, like three or four months before that, I got this really nice set uh, from my local bookstore. Um, it's it's a box that's maybe like that thick, and it's got audio CDs and um, workbooks in it to where – they're not only teaching you how to speak it, but showing you to also how to read it as well. And um, I just was – like my Rosetta Stone and this other set are complementing each other. Like the Rosetta Stone is teaching me how to speak it. This other one uh, by and large is teaching me, yeah, kind of how to speak it, but also how to read it. Mm -hmm. It's got sedatives to kind of keep them calm, By the not way, as we're, aggressive. We're out in the ocean here on the way to Antarctica. This movie moves at a brisk pace, and I think we had said a couple weeks ago when we discussed the film that this is the shortest out of the MonsterVerse. Yeah, just seven minutes under two hours. And that obviously includes the credits, so probably have to minus – at least maybe seven to ten minutes more of credits or five so basically it's under an hour and 50 minutes yeah that's the thing we keep forgetting is that you know when they do when they say a movie is this long they include the credits mm-hmm She's quite the hottie. I was wondering to myself all week, I'm like, how long is it going to take Jace to bring that up? And it's like, <laughs> no time at all. <laughs> I, I didn't even get a chance to stop uh, to start the stopwatch. <laughs> the visual effects in this film are, are absolutely gorgeous. I have to say, by far, it's visual effects wise, it's probably one of, one of the best that we've seen. This whole MonsterVerse series, though, is good because, uh, you know, I had brought up that I watched the 2014 Godzilla uh, shortly after watching this earlier uh, last week. And I'm still impressed as to at least from a visual effects standpoint, how well that film holds up nearly seven years later. I mean, heck, that movie is going to turn seven years old. Was it May 12th or 15th of next month? Uh, May 16th, according to my poster or 16th. here. <laughs> according to my theatrical poster that I have above my couch. The actress playing... Um, um, oh, shoot. The, the, the Simmons daughter here. Um, she's a real good actress. She pulls off being a bitch quite well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I thought, just by watching the trailer and stuff, I thought that she was going to be like the good, one of the normal characters. But then when actually seeing the movie itself, it was completely the opposite. <laughs> no, I knew when I saw her in the trailers, you know, sunglasses, black clothing, that... 99 times out of 100 signals villain <laughs> villainy. <laughs> oh, really? Let's see. 
I should probably. The score for this film is magnificent as well. I own the the soundtrack. I haven't had time to listen to it, but. Of course, again, I'm going to brag about how many times I've seen this film, but having seen this film a number of times and also paying attention to a lot of the music, when, musical cues when they come up, it's a gorgeous score. I, I don't understand some of the complaints people have about this. It, it is really good. And it's the expression here Kong gets when he has a roar um, – about to change here, coming up in like two seconds is really heartwarming or um, heartbreaking right there. Like the cries that they have for Kong in this film are magnificent. Like they, they really just illustrate his, his size and the different emotions he expresses throughout the course of the film. I, I really enjoy that too. So you got the, the CD to uh, the CD. The yeah. Huh. I thought that wasn't going to come till next. I didn't think so either, but then, yeah, they finally, finally did it. But yeah, that uh, gal's name is Isa Gonzalez. Yeah, I, I knew the actress first name was Isa. I just couldn't remember the character's name. Sim- something Simmons, because I know Walter Simmons. Maya Simmons, uh, M A I A. <laughs> I like the little detail if you noticed it, like his eyes were kind of going back and forth between the two. Hmm. It's sign language for home. I got my son here, by the way, for people who (laughs) didn't know that earlier. He wants to go home. Yeah, if you saw the subtitle there. But I think that this is the first time, like, I believe in all eight films of the Khan franchise that he has done something like that with sign language. Sign language, yeah. You kind of got... a form of communication between Kong and Naomi Watts's Anne Darrow um, in that 2005 film, but you know nothing like sign language or anything of that sort. Mm-hmm. Breaking the law, breaking the law, <laughs> breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of chuckled the first time I heard that. I'm like, of course. (laughs) (laughs) It seems like um, Madison... uh, and, and probably it's obviously due to the fact that her mother's dead and, and, and that probably has traumatized her to some extent. And the fact, too, that her dad is – doesn't seem like he's never around anymore, but um, uh, she she comes off as very um, just – angry and, and prone to um, just – anything to 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 bind into just about anything in terms of uh theories and conspiracies but with but yeah you don't really see uh kyle chandler mainly in this entire movie only that is weird like yeah what are you working on a different film at the same time let me see here because I just thought 
that was weird. I, and I kind of had the feeling through the trailers anyways that, yeah, he wasn't going to have a big part anyways. But going through the film, I became even more shocked that he, he's barely in this thing. And I really am disappointed by that. Like, I really would have liked to have seen more of the Brodies. Uh, and I know a lot of people didn't, but I did. Okay. I'm the exception. <laughs> and, but then since they didn't go that route, you know, they had the, um, uh, you know, the Russells here. And I thought, okay, well, that would, you know, let's have some sort of continue. And we do with Madison here, but it just would have been nice to get deeper into the character stuff. And I know that's not what a lot of people wanted. People wanted the monsters fighting and all that. And I get that too, but I, I don't, you know, it's kind of like, I want some, you know, I want some more depth. I, I want more. <laughs> well, I think uh, apparently is showing that there's one movie in between 2019 and 2021 which both of those were obviously the Godzilla films here and it's called Midnight Sky so I probably would have to assume that he was working in that movie while they were in principal production or principal photography with this film I I got the novelization to this movie um, and I know already the first 30 to 40 some odd pages because I briefly skimmed it. This novelization already is going to go into depth on certain things that the movie either barely touched upon or didn't touch upon at all. It's going to go into a little bit on Mothra. It's also going to go into a little bit more on like um, some of the history of the expeditions about Hollow Earth and other Titan stuff. I'm really looking forward to at some point getting to that book because I'm also hoping that as I read through it, maybe more of Mark Russell's character is involved because a lot of times with these novelizations, what happens is – the author gets access to the script for a certain amount of time and they're allowed – I think it's – they're allowed to either – I don't think they're allowed to take notes. I forget the process because I read um, – I think it was Peter David or somebody talked about the process of writing a novelization. I think maybe you can take notes uh, on the script, but you can't keep it obviously. And so they go in there and they take notes or whatever. Uh, as many as they can, and then after so many days or a week or two, they have to give the script back. And then from there, they got to write the novelization. And so obviously when they get access to these scripts, it's still very early. Uh, they're either just starting production or they're very early in the production process. So anybody who knows anything about filmmaking knows that either through – editing after the film has been shot or through the process of filming things are added or eliminated altogether and it's so i'm curious to see other material in the book is different from the actual film well it's funny that you mentioned about the book sora goes in depth about mothra that there's some rumors as far as a even though that Adam Wingard said that there's I like this post, by the way <laughs> the post credit scene that was just inserted within the film but apparently there's a rumor going on that there was a possible other post credit scene where they had a scene with Mothra like turning into the the ween version of mothra and then possibly having like twin like these twins and stuff at the end that's from what i've heard so it's i've heard that too um i'm not gonna believe anything until either wingard or someone else from the production says something mm -hmm. or if it's on like the blu-ray or something like that <laughs> Yeah, because like that one video you were showing me about the one guy who was talking about 
that maybe they were building up to Space Godzilla. And I kind of thought to myself, I'm like, I don't think they were, but there was, I'm like, okay, if that is true, yeah, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe it. I, again, I'm not going to believe anything until – People who were involved with this uh, actually come out and say something because <laughs> otherwise it's just someone's theory. Like every, there were so many people who thought – like we talked about earlier that the Godzilla we see throughout most of this film was Mechagodzilla in disguise, and that was not true. So. <laughs> and I know that there were many theories before seeing any actual footage of the movie here. Like months and months beforehand that a lot of people have theorized of there possibly being a destroyer in this movie. Yeah, I, re- I heard that too. I even heard some folks wondering if it was Biolone. And I know that a lot of people have been trying to uh, – if Monsterverse continues and stuff, that there could be some other theories of how – destroy it would come about and like with some of those little critters and stuff that you saw in hollow earth that they could like in theory like somehow find a way to crawl up the hollow earth and then try to go in the like come from that area where it was struck by the oxygen destroyer from the previous film and then mutate through that way or some other way to to me if they do extend i would say destroy could be the more logical villain in the next godzilla film if they decide to renew the contract with toho just yeah. try to uh, bring that element about but yeah, um, I know there's other theories too with there possibly being Biolon and obviously Space Godzilla. But then how how is Space Godzilla going to come about in the next version when you know G cells or whatever that they decide to call his cells in this universe? Like how are they going to go up to space? Yeah, or how are they. Like, is there going to be aliens involved? <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens, <laughs> but it's aliens. <laughs> yeah. By the Are way, just be involved thing, in uh, we're his, like 36 uh, minutes in and we're but getting to their first me, confrontation. <laughs> I know. I just want to quickly say that while we're here. Yeah. Like, are they going to come down and somehow try to harvest Godzilla's cells or would they find it somewhere? I don't know. You're talking about harvesting Godzilla cells. That almost sounds Orga-ish to me, if you remember that movie. Yeah. I thought it was a neat little touch to have, you know, half of that ship's, um, you know, anchor attached to Godzilla's tail. And that's sort of a nice little visual telling of not only where Godzilla is, but sort of how close he is to the surface. Mm-hmm. The Monster vs. Godzilla is definitely my favorite Godzilla design. Kaboom. Yeah, I I really do like it. And then along with the uh the eighty four version of Godzilla. I really like that design, too. There are a lot of Godzilla designs I like. There aren't too many that I dislike. I I, <laughs> I vehemently dislike the Shin Godzilla one. I f- it's I more that. about how long the tail was and how the lower jaw splits. I just... Mm, that just... No. Uh the son of godzilla one i it's not my favorite but because i've watched the movie enough times over the years it's slowly grown on me but interesting juxtaposition there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Did you happen to notice there too, like when Godzilla bit Kong's hand, there was like just a little bit of blood that was shown? Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. I like too how they actually um, drew the, the sedative capsules on Kong's collar there too. Cause some, you know, little details like that tend to kind of get lost in a lot of filmmaking. Now, didn't you hear something from some people saying that this whole sequence was like 18 minutes long? No, I've not heard of. I heard like that. that, and I'm going. This whole sequence is not 18 minutes, and so I don't know if they were referring to the actual movie, the final cut, or if it was the whole um, filming sequence before the film was edited together. <laughs> yeah, we should. One of these times, do some sort of timer and check to see how long this actual sequence is. I had to just take a guess. I'm thinking this whole sequence is between 8 to 10 minutes. I like this shot. I just really like it. Just the details and just kind of giving you the human viewpoint a little bit. Smack. Godzilla's like, oh yeah, boom. And then Kong actually falls. Godzilla's like, yeah. By the way, say, I noticed. I would say not only from a human perspective, but also from the the kaiju perspective too. Like yeah. getting on their level. But what are you saying? I realized you can make a drinking game out of this film. <laughs> here's here's the drinking so. game. Here's the drinking game. <laughs> Take a drink every time Godzilla makes an attempt to use his ray, but he's prevented from using it. Like right here, we had the jets come in and get him before he was able to use it on Kong. Then we see it many other times later in the film where either Kong like hits him in the face right before he uses it or whatever. We see it like a handful of times too when he's fighting Mechagodzilla. Mm. He's trying to use fire and then Mechagodzilla like – beams him or hits him or whatever it happens so many times in this film i actually find that a bit annoying you're gonna get really swasted towards the end there (laughs) swasted aren't you are you already (laughs) swasted i'm just drinking Lacroix here I'm finishing up some coffee in my Godzilla coffee mug. (laughs) There's another complaint I have about this film as well, and that is in every single fight Kong has in this film, he does not win any of them on his own accord. He's always getting help mainly from the humans in some way, like here, or as in the case with the final battle with Mechagodzilla. If Godzilla had not blown his beam on that axe, Kong wouldn't have been able to take apart Mechagodzilla. I am sort of disappointed by that because one of the things about Kong is that he's just a bad mamma jamma, and he doesn't really win – a fight – well, OK. I take that back. I just thought of one. The first war bat he kills, there's that. But otherwise, everything else, he's getting some sort of assistance on. Well, I would have to say the same thing when it comes to uh, the battle between Godzilla and Mechagodzilla. Oh, yeah. They basically – Godzilla was dead, made, basically. Where they basically made Godzilla you know, weaker – Compared to Mechagodzilla, even though we with talked- Mechagodzilla being a robot and everything, you s- still think with some of the strength and power and stamina that at least Godzilla has, you would think that they would be sort of on equal footing. 
in that regard. But they sort of made Mechagodzilla OP against Godzilla. I like this shot. I like the facial looks of Godzilla's. It's kind of like, oh, fine, I'll get you next time. <laughs> Did you notice in that final battle, Godzilla actually laughs when he hits Kong at one point? We'll get there. I need to quit getting so far ahead here, but... Yeah, dude. <laughs> quit it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I and we talked about this when we discussed the film here a couple of weeks ago, that that was one of my issues. It's, it's not nothing that hurts my enjoyment of it. Well, it dampers it, but it doesn't decrease it enough to the point to where like I dislike it or anything but um, you know I did complain about how I just thought sure I'm okay with an overpowered mecha god so I'm okay with that because you need a big bad villain but there's moments in cinema history where you have too much either of an overpowered villain or you just don't give your hero enough of an opportunity to fight back. I told you it reminded me of the Optimus Megatron battle in that first Transformers movie where Megatron just owned that thing. The only thing Godzilla gets off in this battle against Mechagodzilla is an initial shove, like he shoves Mechagodzilla off. And then when they he and Kong team up to ram Mechagodzilla through that skyscraper. Yeah, and that was sort of my initial criticism was that to me they made Mechagodzilla in this film a little too OP'd to where Godzilla didn't really have much of a chance. I don't have the problem with the overpoweredness, but you could write it where your hero gets in several more hits. Um, Because I saw – you when you watch the final battle, you look at it and you realize there were a few openings where – if they chose to do so, the filmmakers could have Godzilla throw in a few more shots, you know. They just chose not to. <laughs> yeah, and hence, that was sort of my criticism on it, yeah. is that they could have done more with it and at least give Godzilla a chance to put in some punches against Mechagodzilla. Yeah. I found it kind of weird, though, too, that, you know, with the beatings, you know, these monsters get from each other in this film, that there wasn't actually more just blood being – I'm not talking about a bloodbath, but, like, just just a little bit more blood being shown. <laughs> My gosh, Rocky yeah. Four shows more blood than this movie does, and that's a PG film. <laughs> well, and then with what we're seeing here right now, it's sort of – kind of came to my mind and I think I know it's going to go a little bit too far but with uh, Apex Cybernetics that they have this like this tube transportation from whatever yeah. this location is <laughs> here in Pensacola all the way to Hong Kong yep. <laughs> I would like to know how much how many years it took to do that entire yep. tubing system and how much money it took to do that I'm curious, though, too, one of two things. Either how did they hide it from world governments or if they – new world governments were, were, were going to notice, what did they do to either pay them off or sort of just kind of keep it on the down low? But yeah, I've thought about that, too. This is one of those things – you just got to accept it. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you just got to. But. Yeah. But also, I think it would have at least been nice that they, if they had some, uh, something at least having Monarch involved with it, with this movie. Even yeah. though that you had, you sort of had it with Kyle Chandler. But yet that. <laughs> It's just Monarch is just barely involved in this entire film. And I think we talked about this too the last we did, time yeah. in that you know is it possible Monarch got neutered because at the beginning of that last film 
you have Sarazawa and I forget the other gal's character's name. Uh, you know, they're in front of Congress or at least members of Congress talking about monarch and sort of is what they're doing worth some of the funding and, and what have you. And I almost wonder, did they get funding cut because of the events of what happened in King of the Monsters uh, or what? We, we just simply don't know. Uh, we don't even get lip service paid to that. Which I think, I think in the end, I would say that novelization book that you have, it could at least be a key if they have any mentions of monarch but i'm guessing that the uh the graphic novel to uh both khan and godzilla have anything to do with monarch lincoln says he wants a blue godzilla one that's 12 inches tall <laughs> and I told him no he couldn't have one because it's the exact same thing that he has just a different paint job <laughs> <laughs> what I was thinking of is like the like one of those tra- translucent theater exclusive blue Godzilla's like the GFW version oh <laughs> I'm curious because this is in Anar- Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> Antarctica. And again, we don't know because nothing's said even. Is this built on the site of wh- where Ghidorah came out of? Or is that elsewhere? You know. I'm assuming it's in a different location. I'm assuming it is too. Because but- I know with the. Uh- the one monarch location on Antarctica there from th- three years ago that that was completely destroyed. I don't know if they would have <laughs> fast tracked into doing <laughs> rebuilding that entire area. Well, you saw how quickly they put that con containment center together. Although this is apex. Well, but- I'm a- I'm assuming that that well with the containment the Kong containment area, that probably would have taken several years to do over time. I just saw my neighbor across the street when the kids was backing out of the driveway. Car coming, the kid wasn't paying any attention, almost backed into the car that was coming down the street. Wasn't even looking. (laughs) Guessing the on-car... Coming car was honking, huh? <laughs> no, there was no honking, but I just happened oh. to see it. <sighs> well, then I would just say both would be at fault. Because <laughs> I would say that oncoming car should have at least honked the horn. Well, there have been times I didn't honk at people because sometimes you're just taken by surprise sometimes. <sighs> But like there, were, like when I was coming home from G Fest in 2014, I was on the interstate. Like I was maybe like 15 or so miles from home on the interstate here on 96. And this, I was in the right hand lane. The person in the left hand was wanting to turn. They turn their blinker on, and they actually start swerving in. And I didn't have time to like hit my horn. Like I got driven off into the road. And I had to stop and just kind of like collect myself and I had to like swear for a few moments and then I got myself back on the road. I sort of have it had the, I sort of had that happen to me recently when I was coming back from MOA. I was going on Highway 5 sort of towards St. Paul and this was just right next to the airport and one of the people were uh, going onto the highway from the airport area and they were right next to me side by side and I saw the car like trying to get into my lane and I honked the horn <laughs> it's like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> <laughs> 
I was just looking at them too. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is that people like they either use their side mirrors, but again, they always see on the side mirrors, there's always those blind spots. Driving on Daikaiju Network. <laughs> driving tips or driving rage. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we do get to see the Monarch logo on the water bottle there. <laughs> Would you drink wan- monarch water? I almost said monarch water. Monarch water. But of course, here we get the uh, our introduction to the Hollow Earth. One quick nitpick I have about the whole a Hollow Earth moment is that I wish more would have happened during Hollow Earth. Like we could have seen Kong battle, like maybe some skull crawlers and or another creature too. You see, here's the uh, the uh, Superia esque light stream. Yeah. <laughs> I had to laugh at my son because here in a moment when we get the quick like uh, well when when we got the black moment where everything faded out <laughs> Lincoln goes what happened <laughs> 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 something happened to the movie <laughs> I remember there was a time I think it was you and I went to see I forget what movie it was, but we were in the middle of watching it, and all of a sudden, the projector just, like, went out, and everyone was like, what the hell happened? Oh, yeah. I forget what movie that was, too. This was years ago. I do like how Hollow Earth is portrayed. I think it's really well rendered and and realized it's it's really cool how they did it up is down and down is up (laughs) but i didn't really think it just i thought it'd be more more or less like a globe thing that they were kind of showing within that kind of those uh the 3d uh, rendering maps that they were showing earlier in the film but here they sort of make it sort of like it's split yeah like that and you were thinking there's land 360 yeah but instead it's like uh uh 180 like, or like you're between, and then you got a gap and then it's like, 180 it's sort of like kind of you got two uh, horizons oh how how would i put it in between walls i would say it's, it's sort of it's, like that. Yeah, it's a gap. Where I go. thought it would just well, be more or less like in, an enclosed globe with some sort of like uh, element or whatever Wall. it is in the in the middle to to have light. There has to be at some point because it's hollow earth. It's inside. It's it is contained somehow. Oh. Smackaroo. Oh, I just now noticed the reason why that Warbat died is his skull got impaled on that rock. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm like, that. how did he die so easy? Yeah, I noticed that the second viewing is like, it's like, how how did he just die instantly? <laughs> then yeah, I saw it the it second time. It's like, viewings. oh, okay. <laughs> so that's how this it This is cool. The, having something like that with the Warbats, they suffocate their, their prey. That's cool. It's hard to believe basically at this point though too we're like halfway through the film. Yeah. Just doesn't feel like it. Kong's fights are always vicious. It's like ripping of heads and all that stuff. Yeah. Because sometimes when things die, their eyes don't always close. Electrolyte. 
light. <laughs> yeah, these sort of critters that I was talking these about. These little critters, earlier, yeah. As a possible theory of some people were talking about them being destroyer. Uh huh. A precursor. Now this is the Lord of the Rings deal basically the rest of the way. That and maybe uh, 007 Skyfall <laughs> with a sword landscape. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I do wish we could have seen just a couple more battles or something like that here. Because the skull crawlers came from Hollow Earth as well. Mm hmm. So he's at that separation it's, line there. I would say it'd be uh, interesting to know if that rock formation right there right. is kind of like this hand. Yeah. If that's a natural formation or if it was man-made. I have always assumed that it wasn't man-made, but that it was made by Kongs. <laughs> Because, you know, that's so much like a hand. That just cannot be a natural formation. Well, with it being rough and stuff. And when we get to that whole main layer where Khan sort of like announces himself as keen, like, was that, could that have been possibly made of? from cons that whole entire area or man who knows i don't think man has been in hollow earth man attempted once because we heard you know about nathan's brother uh odd number of years earlier trying to make an attempt but then they died my understanding is man has not successfully made an expedition into hollow earth until this point because they were talking about the inversion of gravity and how trying to handle that was the biggest problem, which is why they got these heaves. Mm. But I wonder if the power source within the Hall of Earth could at least be a key to something that they could have used maybe many, many years ago. If... Well, yeah, if there it's were the same sort of Earth, that there could have been something. I mean, if they plan on expanding the whole monster first, that they could maybe try to expand into that whole area. Who knows? What I would like to see, and like I said, I think my novelization will at least touch upon it. I would like either a graphic novel or even a novel where all it is is sort of a history of man discovering – or not discovering Hollow Earth, but theorizing about Hollow Earth and somehow figuring out that, yes, the Earth is hollow and trying to figure out how to get there. I think that would be an interesting story to tell. Mm -hmm. And now, my Mecca. <laughs> I make it you. No, my Mecca. No, it's my Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> no, dipshit. <laughs> I love this Mecha Godzilla so much. Sure you are. And I know, of course, and I think, I know we didn't really dive into it as much, but I know, and from what I've seen, a lot of people have been trying to connect the precursor of what Apex Cybernetics was doing with the uplink uh -huh. as a precursor to Pacific Rim. Yeah, well, and 
I think, too, they've been saying Guillermo del Toro really ever since the 2014 film has always been trying to work with Legendary to get the two universes together. Yeah, I know he's he's been a big propo- proponent of trying to do that. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I, I wouldn't want that. If you want to do that in maybe an anime or something, sure, go ahead. But I don't want it in a live action film. It's amazing. It just grabs the skull crawler, whereas Kong always had issues with him. <laughs> oh, man. Like. I feel bad for that skull crawler. <laughs> yeah. And earlier, you know, speaking about how they got all this money and how how long it took to build the that transportation tunnel I'd like to know how much it took to like how much money it took to make Mechagodzilla I don't you know what I just th- this guy is just filthy rich and he's got so much money to spend he's, he just needs some hobbies so <laughs> <laughs> I go with it I like the fact, too, that with the Mechagodzilla hands that they're kind of like actual graspers and not hands because that makes more sense. It makes sense from a design standpoint and and just from a combat standpoint, too, because you're going to have a better grip on on things if they're designed the way that they are here. Well, and too, I think you have more of a surface area if you're trying to do like a punch maneuver, too, like what you've seen Mecha Godzilla do against Godzilla quite a bit. Well, and two, I think there's like energy, like, like the ability to um, um, uh, uh, transfer energy to like the ends there and turn it into like sort of a energy ball as it's making the punch because that's kind of what it looks like at the end too on a number of occasions when it's punching Godzilla it's almost as if some of that energy is coming down to those appendages as it's punching him Mm -hmm. we're nerds (laughs) well and I was reading on an article about talking a little bit about Mechagodzilla and his capabilities and stuff and from what they were saying that uh, with those punches that you were just talking about that it uh, that it did more damage to Godzilla in the long run than just the uh, that red laser beam that he did or some of the other things that Mechagodzilla dealt mm-hmm. on to Godzilla tools and carve things out I like the little detail coming up here in a few seconds where he kind of gives out this little uh, cry just kind of like anybody here (laughs) but yeah that's just massive I mean just look at him compared to that entire area I would just say it like no man would it would take thousands of whatever years to even like stairs, columns, all the decor around there. Like it must have had a battle. Like it would have had been cons in the past. Now, do, what do you think that is? Do you think it's a war bat or something? That's it seems too large and the skull is too wide for it to be a war bat. Cuz I've been trying to fi- I'm like it doesn't seem like it's Godzilla cuz it's got like fangs and this god's this version of Godzilla doesn't have anything like that. But 
Yeah, when you compare that skull and skeletal structure compared to the war bats that he just fought, those were smaller and their heads were small and narrow yeah. compared to that. I like all the colors in this film. It's very neon. It's got a little bit of that Tron ness to it with all the, the neon tubing and <laughs> that too. King of the Monsters sort of had something like that too, but it was more in the representation of the kaiju when they were solo. Mm-hmm. This score is awesome. Like, the the music being played during this whole sequence is one of my favorites. <laughs> Look at me. I wonder if Hong Kong actually has all that neon probably not i'm assuming <laughs> i know i've seen some night footage of hong kong you know what i'm I gonna look it I up i would say <laughs> like in the main area probably hong kong oh boy maybe so let me take a look here you know what there, it may not be one hundred percent accurate, but it is very darn close. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to say they're they're close enough. Man, I can't believe we're already getting close to the Hong Kong battle here. Well, yeah, this is one of those movies that I consider to have um, not just fast pacing, but a weird way of dividing up its acts. <laughs> because to me, this this right here, and technically we are still kind of in the middle of the film, but we're more like two thirds of the way in at this point. This to me does feel more like the middle, like middle, middle mm -hmm. of the movie. I like this here too. The bioluminescence and coming up under the bridge. It reminds me so much of that Golden Gate Bridge scene from the first film. <laughs> it took him 26 years, but Godzilla returned to Hong Kong. Yeah, you know, I kind of thought of the same thing myself when I watched this uh, last time. It's like, you know, it's been since 95 <laughs> he was last in Hong Kong. And that was supposedly his last film. Although there, it's, you know, he... I don't think we – I can't – again, it's been a while since I've seen that movie. I don't know if we understood why he went to Hong Kong in that film, but it almost seemed like he was just there just to bust crap up. Here he's actually looking for Apex or whatever sent out that signal. You know, He's not intentionally going around trying to destroy it necessarily because mm -hmm. that's not what this Godzilla is about. Right. Because that's just the name of the city. I don't know if it's a charger. I would say it'd be more or less like a charger. Looks like other got, axes there. Yeah, because you got other axes there, and once you complete all of them there that they charge one another it seems like I didn't realize that until now there were multiple axes well, I knew that so wait time. a minute <laughs> all those uh, like dorsal spines are other axes is that what that's supposed to represent 
That's what it looks like to me. Holy mackerel. I, I just, and again, it took me eight views to notice that. <laughs> I basically knew it almost the very first viewing. It's like, hey, there was another X right next to that other one that you just put down. This, it's kind of goofy when you think about it, but I love it so much. Just blowing down into the middle of the earth. Shin will eat your heart out. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Even with your supposed high energy atomic beam, whatever you had there. We get some sort of transformer here. Oh, I mean robot. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of funny. Kong's like, huh. <laughs> uh, it's that simple. You can just claim it. Be like, that's my property. <laughs> Is that... Uh, oh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> well, if Khan has anything to say about it... <laughs> That'd be funny if she said, that's Apex property now, and you see this big foot slam on her. <laughs> and, Kong, and they look up at Kong, Kong's like. <laughs> These things are so ugly, I love them. <laughs> that sounded like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got a cool cry, and they got like this rocky, jagged, like hunch back, and yeah, or like I would say Godzilla s uh, dorsal fin look <laughs> on their back. <laughs> Ancestors of Godzilla. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look at it closely, they sort of have like that dorsal fin esque. A little bit, yeah. Get away. <laughs> so ugly and cool. <laughs> Throws a rock. What are you going to do now? <laughs> you think that was going to end it <laughs> right there? I like that shot there. I don't know why they make it like that. So what's that one comes up? <laughs> that was that was the wrong move right there. I like the shot coming up here where he has his eyeball like right up to the ship. Like who's in there right here? <laughs> Nothing brings joy to me in a movie like a necessary death. And I like how it, <laughs> I just liked his expression after he crushed that. It's like he was a total Chad doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you see him shake his hand too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like he was crushing a beer can or something. Yeah. Like he just <laughs> got done with the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. He's sliding down with the axe. <laughs> Highway to the danger zone. 
Speaking gonna of which, we still right. haven't seen that movie. Yeah, come uh, on. Yeah, like that's... Um, yeah, all, all of those are getting changed. I didn't realize it, too, because I love those Mission Impossible movies. They're making a part seven and eight as well. Like, it's a go for... Th- like, they're already saying, yeah, there's going to be two more at least. <laughs> well, I know I've seen the last two of those movies. I think they're that fun. They, I'd, I'd say the last two probably were much better compared to, I've and I've only only have seen the first one. I haven't seen like two or two or three in some of those other ones. I've only seen the first one and then the last two. I the first one is good. Second one a lot of people hate. I don't I think it's I think it's good. I, I it's not the best in the series, but I still think it's good. Uh but it seems like it, for a lot of people, that's the worst of the series. I thought part three was pretty good. Four, part four is where I really thought they finally kind of like figured it out. Part four, Ghost Protocol, I thought was good. And then um, was it Rogue Nation, I think, is next. That was good. And then it, was it the last one, Fallout? Good. Here we go with the yeah. Now, now, off. now that I remember, I think I did see Ghost Protocol, and then the, the last three. Yeah, now I remember because I know one of the years I went to go see. I forget which one of those that I went to see. One of those with the parents. Take a drink at the theater. <laughs> this film is what it got one of the big things right that the last film meaning the 62 film for whatever reason didn't do and that is a big city battle between these two Mm -hmm. I still would have liked this fight between these two to have lasted longer. Yeah. I really do love the color palette of this film. I think the laugh is coming up. Ah, roasted monkey. <laughs> the laugh's coming here. <laughs> I like that. I like that so much. <laughs> Maybe I should have that as my phone ringtone. <laughs> This is almost like a theme park ride here. Speaking of theme park, they're going to make the very first permanent uh, Godzilla-themed ride over in Japan. Yeah, I knew that was in the works for a while. I'm not sure what uh, theme park is going to be doing it, but yeah, they just recently announced it. And I think from what I heard that they're going to be using the, uh, the MonsterVerse version of Godzilla in it. That'd be great. But from what I saw on the like the concept art that they show along with not only him but Ghidorah as well well, it seems sort of like a hybrid between the legendary version and the Toho version of Godzilla. That's interesting. No, you're you're premature there, Scars Guard. This is like an in-between rounds. <laughs> and 
I just want to emphasize once again to all you Teen Kong folks out there, Kong doesn't win any battle against Kong in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> we win. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> I know they technically both went bud, but G- Kong was as good as dead in both fights if it weren't for human intervention. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what I said, pal. I kind of like Godzilla here just a sec as he's kind of searching. Like, he's kind of, he reminds me of a cat here. Like, oh, where are you? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Kind of like Remy. And Kong's just kind of hanging out. I would think that would hurt as Kong landed on Godzilla's um, dorsal spines there. Like, that would have to hurt, I would think. I sort of thought about that a while back. Take him down. Yeah. There's a dislocation. I'm sorry. I think that's kind of funny. He just smashes into a building. I think so too. Scratching him up. And them ribs and all that. And just look at the lighting yeah. on both Khan and Godzilla. This is kind of funny a little bit. Kong initially is kind of like, uh, fine, I'll yell at you too. <laughs> I've always kind of wondered, like, did Godzilla, like, honestly think – and I know he did earlier in the movie, but at this point in the movie, does he know whether or not Kong is is kind of, you know, that the, the, the thing that's sending out that signal? Or does he realize there's something else out there? Because it, I've always thought it interesting that he never just finished Kong off. Like, I think he knew he had Kong beat for sure, but that he just didn't – for the sake of of just completion, finish him off, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if that was sort of the thing that they were going in that route. Up leading up to the point of Mechagodzilla escaping on his own, and then you know what happens after that. To me, it seemed like Godzilla maybe just isn't like this, you know, See, this, you this bloodthirsty <laughs> killer. Yeah, that the moment where it's like, okay, is that supposed to mean something? Where it changes from blue. To I keep red thinking it's eyes. supposed to. And it's also kind of freaky how it just starts to slowly move. Yeah. Like turning the head and everything. And in that dream I saw... 
<laughs> that dream was pure and fascinating. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it kills him. He's not getting up from that. How did that kill him? It's a or bunch of electricity shooting through you. Or did it? Because we never really know. Part five is him coming back, and he's, like, partially burnt, and, like, he's got, like, Scarred. one eye that's glossed <laughs> over. and <laughs> We're just having fun here, but, again, you can't hear what's going on here. I like Godzilla's face there. He's kind of huffing and puffing like, oh. <laughs> I love this Mecha Godzilla so much. <laughs> it's a Mecha Godzilla, Mark. Mm. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if his colleagues said that. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, don't you know? But yeah, I really do like how they take on the whole uh, design and the combat skills for Mecha Godzilla. I do too. Well, and this should make a lot of old school fans really happy because the the battles in this film are very hand to hand. Mm hmm. Boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> Another boom. We are like 100% synced up here. Because <laughs> every time you said boom, it went boom on my end. <laughs> I think that's probably the first time ever since I was about you to started say doing the commentary thing. <laughs> because typically one of us is like a few seconds ahead. I would like to own a heave. <laughs> it's kind of funny how a thing that small would be able to generate an entire city of Vegas for a week. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's got to be nuclear power or It's like for some reason when I think about that sequence there where he was uh, toying with a little circular thing, <laughs> it sort of reminded me of the M11 part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Were, uh, exchanging like those little mini the CD discs. discs yeah. in his head to program them. I kind of like that little comedic moment there. <laughs> 
Yeah, I didn't realize that. May, was that intentional or not is, is uh, the question. <laughs> Who knows? It's interesting how when he shoots his fire, only the center uh, dorsal plates light up. Yeah, it would be funny when he runs out all of a sudden and just prematurely explodes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that several times, too. <laughs> well, I want to know, how did he get down from Kong so fast? Because, you know, that Kong to the top of his chest has got to be, what, 50 feet or something like that? Like, it's high up there. Maybe 25. I know how to say Godzilla now in sign language. He's like, really? <laughs> oh, bummed. You gotta do it somewhere. Well, I know, but it's just, it's just like this looks sturdy, whack. <laughs> this Mega Godzilla boy. Uh, he just throws Godzilla around like a rag doll. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, and this is a heavy Godzilla. I mean, just. For the first time in franchise history, Kong is fighting Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Well, and sort of teaming up with Godzilla to beat him. Well, yeah. <laughs> I really do like this sequence, the two of them coming together. Yeah, and see Gosh, that. Godzilla just keeps getting the crap kicked out of him. Well, and see, like that, using the energy when he, like, punches yeah. Godzilla. That's the sort of thing that I was talking about earlier where probably was right, me too. against Godzilla. Die with you here. <laughs> Sober. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, that dysfunction, like, it didn't really actually disable Mecha Godzilla. Like, it just created a, a quick little hitch in it. It might have been, yeah, just enough to create an opening, but maybe not that much. It's 
Well, at least an opening to give Khan at least a break. And I know Godzilla technically tail. helped with this, but man, it would have been nice to see Godzilla more involved here. Considering this movie is mostly about Kong. Oh, well, Kong gets a win. I like this shot Godzilla. here. <laughs> <laughs> With assistance from Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Again, everything except that first war bat, he gets help from somebody. Mm. <laughs> oh, what? How did he get down there so fast? He's the vision. That always gets me to jump a small bit because it's <laughs> just loud enough. <laughs> yeah. I like the music here too. Major props. You didn't have to wear it, Mal. <laughs> and I know with Adam Wingard saying that they did make a post credit, but then decided to add it within the movie, I have a feeling it was probably this part. Oh. Or they were back at. Uh, back in the hollow earth with Khan there. I think it's wise because we don't know what the future holds for this. Cause you know, Toho's doing their own thing now. I don't know if Toho wants to compete with this. <laughs> I want to see more. I really do, but I just know in Toho. And All right. The, yeah. That is the, the end of Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jason, fourth time seeing it, uh, you know, thoughts, opinions? <laughs> to me, I think it gets better and better although still some of the shortcomings when it comes to the human elements where i think it would be nice to sort of have some sort of balance in between like what we've discussed a couple of weeks ago about the shortcomings of godzilla versus Kong. but other than that 
still very very entertaining movie very good visual effects probably the best visual effects i've seen in a long time and of course the kaiju battles is by far out of both franchises the best <laughs> by far. yeah i mean and I think – I can't remember if I said this uh, on air. I know I said it to you before we started recording that um, this to me just gets more entertaining with with each viewing. And yeah, it, it's unfortunate that this is a pretty flawed film in many ways. Um, lip service is paid to some things, uh, some visual service such as what happened to the other Titans is paid or is, is mentioned to kind of – get you up to speed on what's happened between king of the monsters and now um does that make some of the 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 issues satisfying not necessarily but um it's it's understandable why they had to do something like with the titans you have a certain budget there just probably wasn't the money you know to go in there and animate how, however many titans there were and to have Godzilla and maybe Kong go up against all those titans um, but it's still a very entertaining film I, I get more and more entertained by it with, with each viewing um, flawed movie I mean in general no movie's perfect um, and I talked about how last podcast too that I've been in a general sense slightly disappointed with the monsterverse in the terms of it seemed like with Godzilla and a little bit with Skull Island that maybe we were going to go into uh, a more sophisticated mature storytelling approach uh, with this series and what it's become is sort of the typical you know monster punches monster which is fine but we already have a bunch of those other films uh to revisit if we want to and i was just hoping for something a little bit different with this franchise it's it's still good and i've realized uh i've been very harsh on king of the monsters over the last almost two years now and i've been a little bit more um not forgiving's not the word, but just more, I guess, accepting of what it is. And I've I've always found that film to be entertaining. I just, like I said, was disappointed because it seemed like we were going to go in one direction, and I was really looking forward to that. And then we right. went almost the exact opposite, and that was my biggest hang up with king of the monsters is that it just like we abandoned the type of storytelling and artistry that was set up with that film but godzilla versus kong very entertaining film i love it uh, you know there's at this point there's what 13 more days while it's on the streaming service um I'm yeah. going to try to watch it as many times as I can. It's going to be hard because Mortal Kombat's coming out here in like a few days. Yeah, I was um, going to say that's probably so. the, the only thing that I'm now looking forward to with Mortal Kombat coming out next week. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to try to figure out some balance there. But, um, you know, just try to watch the heck out of this thing as many times as I can before it disappears for a few months. But hopefully, like Wonder Woman 84, we don't have to wait any longer than maybe two months because it was just a hair over two months from the time it left HBO Max to when we got the home video release. So I'm hoping it's kind of a similar time frame. Sooner would be better, but I know that's not going to going to necessarily be the case but yeah i really love the film it's very enjoyable it, it's fantastic yeah yeah with it uh being basically the hot ticket right now since the beginning of the pandemic uh with the gross grossing i i think it just passed the uh, the 350 million global globally uh here and i'm not sh- sure how long it's going to actually take to me i think it sort of depends on how long it's going to be in the theaters and with it being as popular as it has been like basically the, the first real blockbuster as you mentioned in the previous episode since the beginning of the the whole uh, situation that we've got going on right now. So to me, I think that sort of depends on how long it lasts 
in theaters from when it leaves until they bring it out onto physical media form. The thing is, though, it's gotten to a point, and I've noticed this with a handful of movies every year, and it happened with Wonder Woman 84 even. When it came out on home video, it was still in some theaters. Okay. So we're kind of at that point where they're – and I don't know – and the pandemic, I'm sure, is probably part of it. They know people are, are thirsty for media, and some of these studios want to recoup some of that money. They know they're probably not going to get all their money back. And so physical media, both in, uh, well, and even digital downloads, is, is one way to get that money. Yes, they're making money right now. A lot of that, though, is overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, money still is money. <laughs> but right. um, they, I, I think, though, they're they're just wanting to recoup a lot of that back, and one way of doing that, especially in the current climate we find ourselves in, physical media. You get the product out there, you're gonna make some money off of people buying it. And like we've been saying, and and as the figures have shown, this is a very popular film. This is a movie that I really do believe is gonna go gangbusters when it's available to purchase. I mean, I'm definitely. With all, like all my favorite films, I, I'm out there day one purchasing, it, and this is going to be a day one purchase. Just hoping so. that there won't be any stupid scalpers trying to take. No, it's not, not, that, I'm not worried so. about that. No, <laughs> but anyways, that's Godzilla versus Kong. That's our commentary for it. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it and had as much fun with it as we have. And so we will. Um, As of this recording, we have a special guest next Saturday. It'll be 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, We are going to be interviewing uh, Frankie B. Washington uh, with their upcoming Kickstarter project. We're going to be interviewing him about the project and talking about that. So uh, that's going to be our final live episode for a while uh, because after that, we're going to go dark uh, for a little while because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be preparing for Daikaiju Fest. Uh, We've already been uh, working on that a little bit over the last month and a half or so. And really after next Saturday, really from the time – from that moment up until – you know, we get the premiere of Daikaiju Fest in early, middle-ish July. Um, that's the last you're going to hear from us, at least in terms of a podcast form. So just want to let everybody know uh, we're going to try to do the best we can to just um, – uh, market the heck out of Daikaiju Fest. We're really excited about this year because we actually have more time to s- think about things and to produce uh, the the show as well. We think this is going to be a fun uh, Daikaiju Fest this year. So we hope you're just as excited as we are. Yeah, because I'm thinking about tomorrow starting to uh, come up with some of the marketing stuff as, as far as advertising Daikaiju Fest 2 uh, mm-hmm. and probably st- start doing that maybe uh, the day after when we do our uh, interview with uh, Matt Blair and Frankie B. Washington uh, next I think Saturday. it's just Frankie joining us. I okay. don't think Matt's going to be joining us. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, probably s- start doing the advertisement uh, for Daikaiju Fest 2 and I know I've been in the middle of watching uh, Jumborg Ace which I'm going to be doing for one of my panels as far as sort of the overview of that uh, entire show I'm not sure how many episodes that I'm currently in but I know I've been on the first disc and I think there's 50 episodes total and doesn't seem (laughs) it seems like that they've fitted almost like all the episodes within one disc that's what it sort of feels like or just more than 50 episodes that's how it feels like <laughs> but uh i haven't really gotten into that i think for the past week or so but hopefully tomorrow and maybe later on today i should start getting back into that and i think i might have one more left uh solo wise before we do our 
whole shebang on what we're planning on doing. So, but, uh, but yeah. yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And we're looking forward to talking to Frankie next week. We hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Everyone. <laughs>